Accurate alignment of the engine with the drivetrain is critical. Misalignment results in a greatly shortened life of transmission bearings, transmission oil seals, and cutlass bearings, not to mention a lot of engine vibration. Because she has a V-drive, Seafire needs two separate alignments, between the prop shaft and the V-drive, and between the engine and the V-drive. Shaft alignment is direct using a feeler gauge and adjustment screws on the V-drive to ensure uniform spacing to a tolerance of two thousandths of an inch between the coupling plates. This video begins after that process has been completed and shows how I improvised to get the engine and the V-drive aligned. Today I'm working on aligning the engine with the V-drive. And you can see that the propeller shaft down below, the bellows is the shaft seal, is already hooked up to the drive flange on the V-drive down at the bottom. But the drive shaft between the transmission and the V-drive is out. And so right now what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to align the engine and the V-drive so that they are as close as I can make them. And uh, one thing that I've done to try to make that a little bit more uh, easy to visualize is I've, I've clamped uh, a T-square or, or a, just an L-square, Starrett square, with an extension ruler on it going from the center point of the V-drive or the, uh, the transmission flange and then basically pointing towards and very close to the uh, the aperture in the V-drive that, uh, that the jack shaft goes in. So there's my indicator clamped to the flange of the, of the transmission and it's relatively closely aligned with the center line of the transmission. You can see as I turn the, uh, the transmission flange, basically that, that, uh, that edge of the six inch ruler stays pretty much centered. So in setting up this indicator, one of the things that I did was I extended the ruler until it was very, very close to the face of the uh, input for the spline shaft on the V-drive. And you can see that as I turn the transmission coupling, that spline, that extended uh, ruler basically stays exactly the same distance away from the edge of the the, uh, the, the V-drive. So right now the engine and the V-drive are actually parallel to one another. Uh, those, the, the two coupling plates are in the right place. The problem is that, as you can see, the engine is too low. It needs to come up a little bit. And I'm going to move around to another perspective so you can see that. So here's looking at the, the indicator from the transmission flange from another angle and I'm sort of more or less horizontal to the whole system and as you sort of trace the, the, the ruler towards the aperture of the feed drive you can see that it's it's below the center line. The center line is right about there and the ruler is down there. So it's about between a quarter and five sixteenths of an inch away. So what I have to do in order to raise that is I have to raise the whole engine. And I do that using adjustments on the motor mounts. So each of the motor mounts has got 
a set screw up, up above with a lock washer and a, a nut below which allows me to raise or lower the engine. So I have my assistant here, my grandson, and he's going to be reading out to me as I make the adjustments to make sure that we get everything where it needs to be. And Hello! That's... There he is. That's Arlo. Hi! <laughs> Okay, I've now raised the port side of the engine uh, with the, re the adjustment nut turned three full revolutions and I've adjusted the port side of the engine one full revolution. I think I need to go up one more revolution on the starboard side rather um, and then so it'll be three and two and then at that point it will definitely be above the midline and then as I raise the other end of the engine it should come back down close to close to the middle. So now we're looking at the position of the indicator relative to the V-drive shaft input and whereas previously it was down about five sixteenths of an inch now it looks like it's very close to being at the center point. Uh, horizontally. Uh, it looks to be not changing as we go from one side to the other. So that means that the faces are parallel. It means that the alignment of the two units is very good, at least close enough for what I think we need. So now we've backed away a little bit. You can get a perspective of the entire engine transmission V-drive assembly, the engine compartment. And it's pretty evident that based on that kind of very rough indicator that my clamped carpenter square and ruler extension provides. It looks like it's fairly close to being lined up. The, uh, the precision is, <laughs> is coarse at best. Uh, we can't really do the kind of, of alignment with the feeler gauge that I did with the propeller shaft because uh, obviously I don't have mating couplers. Uh, and even when the shaft for the V-drive is in place, that shaft includes a universal joint, which makes getting an absolutely precise alignment impossible. However, it's very close, and the Walter Machine Company instructions for aligning the system indicate that uh, with that universal joint in the transmission, there is a tolerance of about three degrees Okay, today's job is to get the jack shaft installed between the transmission and the V-drive. And the jack shaft can't get in there unless the engine gets lifted. Or I alternatively undo the, the aligned coupling with the propeller shaft and the V-drive and unbolt the V-drive and tilt it back. But one way or another, uh, that space has to become freed up so that the shaft can be introduced into the V-drive and then mated with the plate on the transmission. So of the two options, I'm thinking that lifting the engine is easier. Uh, basically, I have a, a four by attachment point across the companionway frame and a come along ch small chain lift half ton capacity that leads to another strap which goes around the transmission. Uh, I've also loosened all of the bolts, taken the top nuts off of the, the engine mounts towards the transmission side and loosened the top nuts on the other two and uh, my idea is that uh, by lifting the engine straight up, uh, when I put it back down again, since I have the bottom nuts taped into place, 
on both sides and since the alignment as of uh, using the, the alignment jig that I put together is very close then once we get everything back together and I lower the engine back to its existing position uh, it will essentially still be aligned and we'll have the opportunity to recheck that alignment as the process proceeds and now it's time to go ahead and raise the engine So, with the engine raised, you can now offer the shaft with the greased splines to the V-drive, and there she goes, just like she's supposed to, right in there. So the next step now is going to be to lower the engine and pull it back in this direction so that I can get the connecting plate to fit in here. Bolt everything together and then see how we're situated. So now I'm going to reverse the direction of the ratchet. Start rolling the engine back down. I want to make sure that as I'm doing this Got the shaft out of the way, and that the brackets are landing down on the pad where they're supposed to be. And there we are. The next question is going to be, can we fit the coupling plate? It's going to be close. I'm going to pull the engine back just a little bit more in order to make that a little easier. So I have this <clears throat> raised up here so that I can pull the engine back. Help to get everything to fit together. Okay, so there's a couple of steps that need to be done now in order to do the final alignment. Um, one of them is to measure the clearance around the edge of the shaft for which the Walter Machine Company has provided an alignment gauge, a nice little piece of cast bronze that set me back $24. And the theory is that basically this gauge should show a constant distance between the edge of the flange and the shaft as it gets rotated around the, uh, the V-drive entry. And the majority of this adjustment essentially is complete now. I, I raised the engine just a little bit using the mounting adjustments. And this is now very close to being exactly where it needs to be. Certainly within tolerance. The second adjustment, the second alignment, uh, is basically to ensure that there's uh, a parallel surface between the transmission flange and the, uh, 
on, and the V-drive. Now we did this previously with uh, a sort of a crude gauge, a crude indicator that I put together. Now what we're going to do is we're going to take very precise measurements between the edge of the flange and a reference point on the yoke on this bearing, this, this uh, bore for the U-joint bearing. So basically I'm going to measure the distance between here and here and to do that I'm going to use a, a set of, of calipers lining these up as close as I can make them and then very carefully so as not to jar anything pulling it out and basically the gauge reads about 43 and a half 60 fourths or 1.665 so I'm going to do the same thing on the other side uh, without without moving the shaft to see if uh, those clearances are are the same on both sides and get it to show the, the gauge read 1.68 so it's it's a it, those are relatively close to one another now bear in mind uh, according to the manufacturer there is a tolerance in play in the angular shaft of three degrees uh, anything less than three degrees is acceptable okay the engine is running nothing amiss there and all started up on the first try more importantly, it's a slow idle, about 900 RPM, 800, 900 RPM. And although you can see some vibration, and attack poses, there's no, very, very little vibration being felt through the motor balance in this boat. Whereas previously, when it were idle, you could definitely feel it. Now, we're going to go ahead and put the gear in forward, push it forward, push it forward. Give it a little gas. 